focus on these on these world champs you know um, great opportunity again for us reset you know last game is behind us move forward because that doesn't matter that's not going to help us going forward so just get going get guys back in the building you know reset new week i guess how do you you know obviously everybody has different obligations to the holidays but how do you try to balance those things with doing the work and getting ready for christmas i only have one wish and one present i want <laughs> How did you feel when Mary came out of it? And you talked after the last game about being in a position for a group for yourself for a lot of people. Depending on what happens with Josh, is this an is this an audition for the mirror? How do you think he came out of it and going forward? Well, first I think Zamir prepared himself each and every week for this opportunity, and he took full advantage of it. Maybe the op maybe the reps weren't there, the opportunity for carries. I don't think we hit the twenty number for him. That you know that's our kind of goal for all our backs. Um, but what I saw was a physical runner, somebody that was moving a pile that was strained for to get every inch, every foot, every yard he can get, productive in a passing game, uh, productive in a uh, pass pro as well. Um, and when you say audition, I, you know, every day is an audition, national pro. Like everybody's on a day-to-day, minute-by-minute contract. We can all get fired, you know, in the blink of an eye. So that's how we approach today, guys, though, it. take advantage of your opportunities, and he did just that. How great can Trey Tucker be? So I'm getting a couple of touchdowns on uh, Thursday against the Chargers, but him moving forward, just getting that confidence and being a weapon for you. Yeah, no, he, I mean, come on. Forge for speed, man. Four three, whatever you want to call it. He's fast. He can, he's fast, fast, right? So all the attention always goes to Devontae. And then eight. And then now you better look at Jacoby and then Big Mike. But there's nothing that you can prepare for when that speed gets upon you. And I think that confidence in that game that, that came out of it for him. Making those catches, making those throws, everybody celebrating with him. I mean, that's that's huge, not just for him, but for us as a team because uh, he can split the safeties. And I think a lot of people understand that. But I think hats off to him because it's been a God, when is it going to come, Trey? When is it going to come? And then you know, obviously, it was a breakout game for him. How much confidence is the defense playing with now, and how much does that go back to what Patrick Graham's doing? Yeah, I, I think you know Patrick, the staff. You know, even when I was there at line, linebacker position as a coach. You know, just we kept talking about the process and trusting and believing it and staying within the scheme. And then the plays come to you. We know where all the attention goes to on our defense. It's to our left side with 98. There's opportunities there for the rest of our defense to make plays. And if we do our job and we do it each and every snap, it gives you that opportunity. And you saw it last week with Malcolm Coons. You've seen it with Spillane. You've seen it with Jack Jones. You've seen it with Tyree. You, now what you're seeing is everybody contributing to a defense that you know, Patrick is sitting upstairs and you don't really have to do too much. The players are playing at a, a speed and a physicality that less is more. Allow them to use their God-given physical attributes and let them put that on display. And then you put them in position to make plays. And I think that's all come together. It's a group that believes in one another. They have fun with one another. I mean, I don't know what it looked like from the top down on television, but on the sideline, it's real juicy. Guys are having fun, man, and that's good. You know, when you're having a good defense, you celebrate everybody's success. Antonio, uh, there's always a lot of pressure for a first-round pick, especially a top-ten pick like Tyree. Um, it obviously has been a uh, process for him. How has he handled it uh, mentally uh, as well as the physical part uh, on the field? I'm sure early on he was frustrated, as we all were. Um, but it, it kind of went the opposite. Way. Most rookies start here, and then they go down in November, December. His, his arrows just keep going up and up. Each and every week, each and every day in practice, you see something and say, okay, here we go. This, this is what we saw on film. And I think it's a credit to him of not becoming mentally weak. And I think looking at Max, looking at Malcolm, working with Rob, working with Matt Edwards, our D-line coaches, and just constantly doing it each and every day. And really just, I think all rookies, when they get drafted in the first 10, first 10 picks, they, I got it, I made it, I'm good, you know. And it's hard. It's hard in this business. And I think he respected that process, maybe a little bit too late. 
Uh, it's not early enough to see him, but um, I think he's done a great job as far as you know adapting to different roles that we put him in. You know, sometimes you got to find that niche in that player that's what, what gets him confidence. And I think when we move him inside, put him back outside, you can see the confidence just growing with this kid. Obviously, there's still three games left to play for him to continue to move that needle uh, forward. But he's also going to have an offseason, knock on wood, he stays healthy the rest of the season. An offseason where he can devote strictly to football as opposed to last year when he was coming back from sort of, you know, rehab. Right. Um, how big of a difference can that make if he takes advantage of that of that time? Yeah, that? I mean, one healthy, right? This whole offseason, I mean, I don't think he practiced until after the Niners preseason week one. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have a normal offseason. You know, he was rehabbing in the month of December. Couldn't even run his 40, couldn't do anything at the combine. So it'd be good for him to just get in here with our train staff and our, and our, and our guys here, nutritionists, and everybody just change his body even more. I mean, just, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. And it's, it's what he wants to get out of it and what the, the, the work that he's going to put into, which I I would be surprised if he's not here each and every day. When 98 shows up, probably two weeks after the season's over, right. he'll be here right with them. And that's you have no better mentor and leader than the Paul Lane. When you look at your secondary and also your linebacker room, what's the biggest area of improvement you've noticed in that from a pass coverage perspective? I think how we're attacking football. Not just with interceptions, but punch outs. I mean, there's a lot of bang bang plays. I don't think, you know, I would say probably other than the Kansas City game, not a lot of yak, you know, after the, after the catch. What you see is guys pretty much on the string together. If you're in zone defense, you know, just, you know how that works, right? Everybody needs to move and see things equally. You know, it's vision and break defense for the most part, unless you're a pattern match defense, which we do with both. But then when we play man, which we got into the last two weeks, you see those guys get up there and challenge and make every ball contested. And I think that's the thing that I'm really proud of when I watch our group is how we compete when the ball is in the air. There's not too many times you don't see a black jersey in uniform. Do you believe that personalities can play a role in that? Because when you look at Nate, when you look at Amik, when you look at Jack, they're sure. you know, uh, outgoing personalities, aggressive personalities, you think that translates on the field? Yeah, no, all of them, man. It's, uh, it's a great group to work and watch each and every day, the competitiveness, the, the spirited battles amongst each other. But more importantly, how they celebrate for one another. That's what I like to see, man. That, that was just, I mean, you know, sometimes you'd be on teams and the guy get a, make a big play and everybody walks away from him. I mean, these guys, boom, like, they gravitate to one another. And that's good. And obviously they have the skill set too now to do what we're asking to do. So that's part of the process as well. Darryl had no noise so much. Uh, are you a believer and are you going to be using that in practice this week or because you've had to be silent count so much this season, is it more just focusing on what you guys do? Well, it's always going to be focused on the Raiders, but what I ask the team to do today is, and this week is bring our own noise. Bring our own noise to the stadium. The Chiefs use a lot of uh, trick plays, a lot of gadget plays. How do you prepare for that as a coach? Can't. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's, got, he's got a million of them. <laughs> Every time you think you've seen one and you've seen it all, here comes another one. And they're creative. They have fun doing it. That's good. Uh, but obviously, at the end of the day, you got to do your job, right? So most of the time, where those trick plays come? Fringe, red zone, near the goal line. So, I mean, come on. We're, we're alert to it already, right? So that's that's being talked about in meetings as we're going forward throughout the week. And that's just everybody being attentive. Like, there's no need to run up the field in this kind of game, right? They get down here. We saw it last time we played them. They ran the ball in. We don't want that to happen. If they don't run it in, here comes the gadgets. You know, we saw the ring around the Rosie deal they did last year, all 20 games, cool. Um, but at some point, the best way to stop a trick play is do what? Get it in the mouth. We talked we talk about coming out of the body, that's something that you felt the team needs to improve at was not just getting off to those fast starts, but finishing strong. Considering how the last game against the Chiefs went, how much of an impact was this week? Huge. I mean, two parts to that, that question there. Um, they're one of the best teams at the end of the second. And it's happened to us in three games now that they found a way to get the ball. And no matter if it's 10 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, three minutes, they're, they're going to score. And that's our job as coaches to put these guys and, and have calls to put us in a position not to allow that to happen. And then when we're in that position to make the plays. They're one of the best teams, as you talked about it, in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's why they're world champions, right? Let's just keep it a matter of fact. That, that's why they've been one of the best teams in this, in this Division in the National Football League for the you know, X amount of years now. Everybody has to be doubted. I mean, to beat the world champions, you have to be at your best. And you got to do a little bit more, right? And that's not going above X and O's. It's not doing anything out of the ordinary. It's, you know, reading your keys. A little anticipation will come into play. But more importantly, you know, the group together, I feel for us as Raiders, to make up our minds and say enough is enough. 
I mean, if you can do it in the first quarter, which we've done two out of three games, being up 17 nothing, 14 nothing, you got to find that we have to strain as coaches and players to do that for 60 minutes. And it's really important in the second quarter, in the second quarter, and the fourth quarter. Is that some of the exercise that you did against the Chargers or, or focusing on against the Chargers in the second half, making sure you kept the foot on the gas for that exact reason? Yeah, and, and I'll even go back, and I know it's in, in two weeks, but I thought we did a good job in Minnesota. And when I say that, you know, we kicked off as a three and out. We got the ball, we moved down the field, the ball's at the 11 yard line, but we happened to turn the ball over. So we got off to a fast start there. So the last two weeks, what, we, what we've been working on didn't quite go in week one, or excuse me, in, in week against the Vikings, but the next week it did. And to be honest, when I made that statement, it was, I, I actually had to reset myself because I told the players at halftime, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. And that's what my comment meant. So regardless of what the score was, we we're gonna play that game, come out just like we did in the first quarter. Whatever our calls were, whatever we scripted, whatever we decided, that was going to be the, the mindset and, the, and the, the plays we were going to come out with in the second half is what we are going to do at that point. So that, that's going to be going forward. That's something we worked on. And now, go back to that question, Rashad, it's, it's the fourth quarter, finishing. And I was still, even that charge game, like, finish. You know, to see 14 points going on the board defensively, that was frustrating. We, no, it don't matter if the backup's in or if Nashville's professional football. Everybody want to play, right? Put me in, coach. But goddamn it, play. Stop it. <laughs> hey, defense, same calls. You know, just gotta execute. Yes, sir. You mentioned growing up as a Raider fan. When you think of Raider football, what do you think, and, and how close do you think this team is to playing Raider football since you've taken over as the interim coach? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, when I see Raider football, I see I see personality, I see swag, I see confidence, I see guys that believe in one another, I see winning performances, I see the superheroes being superheroes. I see a certain physicality and nastiness uh, of how they play, not just on defense, but throughout. Uh, I see a group that does not apologize. Um, and that regardless of what the outcome is, you know that you poured your heart out on that field. And uh, have we done that? At times, at times. It, it, I don't think it's something that you just, if you hit a switch or a new coach comes in, a new player comes, it takes time to build. Most winning organizations takes time to build. The problem is you don't have a lot of time. Where does Josh help by the way? What's your optimism, level of optimism that you play on Sunday? Yeah, um, just like last week. I think he was close to last week. You know, that was a decision we all made in the best interest of him, of himself, uh, for himself. If I'd be a banking man, I would think he'd play this week. And you have to on that Colton? Same deal. If I was betting, you know, those guys are going through the process that this is a game you want to play in now. You don't, you don't want to sit there. You, you don't want to watch it on television. You want to be there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Sure.